Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I was surprised, actually, to be honest. Uh, I, I was a little bit surprised by how much positive feedback I got on my previous video of me looking at some games from the uh, the Game Fest CD. A lot of people seem to enjoy it more than I thought would, uh, unless people are just being nice and saying that they're enjoying it when they really don't. Um, and also, a lot of people uh, said that they had similar CDs. Uh, many people mentioned Game Empire, another similar CD, which was uh, common in the US. Um, and I also have the two Game Empire CDs, uh, but those are better known because they were fairly widely distributed in the United States, I believe. But uh, as a kid growing up in Canada, we had uh, we had Game Fest. So anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the uh, menu here and let's carry on. So the last time, the last game that I finished was, uh, yes, Blue Balls. Ah, the next game is Captain Comic. What a great game this is. What a great time we're in for, folks. Um, Let's see, we can check the details here and see the, the directory it's in, it's in soft action comic. But actually, uh, before, I st before I run the game, a couple of technical notes that I should touch on. First of all, somebody did uh, point out uh, in a comment to the previous video, and thank you because uh, they correctly identified the problem. The reason why I wasn't able to run these programs from the CD from this program like that is because um, I had made a subfolder uh, or a subdirectory. I, I had put... Uh, all the contents of the CD into a subdirectory called GameFest, and it was expecting the program files to be in the root directory of the drive. So hold on, if I kick out back to DOS for a second here, you can see now I'm in, I'm just in C colon backslash, not in any subdirectory or subfolder, and now all the, the files are here, and now it should work. Uh, so thanks again to the person who pointed that out. That uh, apparently causes the uh, this menu program to to uh, not be able to run games directly from the menu uh, program. Uh, the, another technical note, by the way, I uh, did notice after making the previous video, some games don't quite scale properly to my video uh, window size, because these games run in several different resolutions. Some of them are, you know, 320 by 200, some of them are 640 by 480, or some variation of, thereof, like 640 by 350. Uh, in the last video, while I was playing Aldo's Adventure, you could see some of my Windows desktop at the bottom of the screen because the Aldo's Adventure, uh, the vertical resolution wasn't quite as big as uh, as that of the uh, previous resolution that I'd been running in. So, so yeah, that that uh, was a little bit smaller than the the video frame, and then a couple of other games were actually bigger than the video frame, which caused the bottom of the game to get chopped off. I'm not sure what I can do about that, unfortunately, because uh, I can't actually change the size of the video during the video. Um, so we might just have to live with it. I hope it's not going to be too much of a problem. If there's some game where we're really missing something because too much of the, the game window is being cut off, uh, maybe I'll make a separate video where I just show off that, that game or maybe that set of games that didn't show up properly for some reason. But anyway, we'll come back to that. Uh, take it as it comes. Just play it by ear for now. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, Captain Comic. Let's go ahead and try running this from the CD this time. It should work this time, I think. Yes, it does. The Adventures of Captain Comic Revision 2, covered 1988 by Michael Denio. Uh, yeah, the usual shareware. Um, let's see, should I press K to define the keyboard or press any other key to begin? I'll just go ahead and... Boy, that music's loud. I'm worried about how loud that music's going to come out on the video. I, I always have problems balancing out my sound levels as well. Uh, but anyway, oh, I should have read the uh, the documentation for this as well, because I don't remember what the keys are. Um, well, let's just see how it goes. So this is telling you, and this is telling you the stuff. So basically everything at the top is a power-up, and everything at the bottom is an enemy. So touch the stuff at the top, don't touch the stuff. Uh, touch the stuff at the top, shoot the stuff at the bottom, basically. Basically comes out to that. So here's where we start. Outside this castle. And when you start the game, you can't shoot. But if you walk just to the left, you pick up that battery, and that gives you the ability to have one shot on the screen at a time. And you shoot with the space bar. See that meter, that red meter in the upper right just below my score? That basically shows if I hold down the space bar to shoot, you can see uh, that meter goes down, and then when I release the space bar, it recharges. Below that, the shield, of course, is, uh, I think it's basically our, our health, 
or armor or whatever before we die. And I can't go in this direction, but uh, oh, these birds are uh, are dangerous. Yeah, those, those birds were part of the things that we should shoot if we see them or else just avoid. So let's go ahead and carry on. Um, this is, in many ways, this is a fairly average, pretty not not very outstanding EGA size trolling platformer f from the 80s for PCs. Um, the game itself is, I would say, for the most part, pretty competently made, but nothing really outstanding. Uh, when I said we're in for a lot of fun, I'll, I'll show you why. The, the great fun to be had from this game is not uh, not so much from the game itself, but, um, well, I'll, I'll come to that later. Whoops! Okay, that was stupid, and I think I lost points for that. I, only, I lost a, a life and I lost some points. That's kind of annoying. So yeah, those bluebirds, I think the king called them shy birds. They just basically go on a linear path once they start flying. But these red birds, these red birds are more difficult to deal with because they will actually try to pursue you. See, the, the bluebirds are more, more likely to avoid you, but these red birds, they can be kind of aggressive at times. So you have to be careful. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Oh, that shield gave me an extra life. I think the shield recharges your, obviously, your shield if your shield is damaged. But since I was already at full shields, it gave me an extra life instead, which is nice. If I hadn't lost that life stupidly, I would now be at five lives, which I think is the maximum. Anyway, I don't really have a lot to say about this game. I mean, it is kind of... Um, for the most part, it's more mellow than your typical side-scroller, I guess. I mean, I'm not constantly shooting dozens of enemies here. I mean, yeah, there are some birds flying around that I might have to shoot or avoid now and then. But you can see it's it's more a game about explora exploration, which is nice. I do like that. I do like games that uh, emphasize exploration. I'm not really much of a huge... Uh, huge person who's really that much into... Uh, I was trying to dodge that bird, and I failed on all counts. I was trying to dodge that bird without falling off the platform, uh, but instead I fell off the platform and failed to dodge the bird, so I was really a, a failure in every possible... pretty much in every possible way on that uh, that particular endeavor. But, but anyway, so up there is a key, which I'm going to assume that we need to go through that door. Is there anything over here? I can't tell if there's anything... I can't tell I'm just walking off and... Oh, there is something here. I wonder, should I try it? Okay, I can go through that door. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, there's a battery that lets me... Uh, now I can have two shots on the screen at once. Oh, these crabs are annoying because they jump they, they jump around you and often they don't touch you if you can dodge. It's not that difficult to dodge them, but they are quite annoying because they hug very close to you. Oh, that guy fell into that pit down there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, yeah, I, I am... I am bad at games in general. Which explains why I'm doing such a terrible job of dodging stuff in this game. But, uh... Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's good. That's good. That's that's some health or armor or whatever. And there it goes again there. I lost it. Well, I didn't lose all of it. I just lost a couple of... Anyway, I don't know how long I should keep playing this. I don't want to... I don't want to focus too long on any one game in this collection because, um, you know, I mean, I want to keep moving. I have, relatively speaking, I have a lot of games on this CD that I could be looking at, so I don't want to spend too long on this. So let's go ahead and just get out of that. Uh, yeah, I pressed escape and then you can press Q to quit. So that's Captain Comic. Pretty nice game. Let me kick out of here just for a second get back to the DOS prompt because I do want to um, I do want to show you folks a couple of things. First of all, let's see, I think both of the files I'm after are .doc files. Yeah, they, it's kind of it was kind of weird. Back then they often used the .doc extension for documents which were just plain text. So in this case, it's basically a synonym for .txt. Now, today, of course, it's associated with Microsoft Word and compatible programs, but back then it was just just basically another extension for plain text files. But what I want to do, I think I have the browse program in this directory. First, I want to take a quick look at the documentation. So you know, here's the introduction and various stuff. There's the game objective, which tells you a little bit more of the story. Um, Here's some instructions, which I'm not going to... Yeah, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Here are the default controls. Um, is Alt open door? I seem to recall that I pressed down to open door. Okay. Yeah, this is actually... Actually, no, these are not the default controls because I was pressing spacebar to shoot, 
Yeah, this is that insert key is the fireball, but actually I was pressing space to shoot a fireball and up arrow to jump. So those are actually, these are not the default controls. Um, oh, and apparently, yeah, that's Blastola Cola. I called it a battery. That's actually something called Blastola Cola, which gives you the ability to shoot fireballs. I guess it must give it must give Captain Comic really terrible indigestion, and he gets so indi uh, so indigestive that he. Uh, okay, I'm not going to pursue that line of thought. Anyway, so yeah, more of this and that. Um, I'd love to just dwell on some of this text, but uh, but I won't. Oh, here we go. Here's the solution to level one, just in case you couldn't figure it out. But I'm not going to dwell on this text too long because I do want to move on. And in particular, I want to show off this other file here called comichlp, obviously comichelp.doc. Folks, this is, well, I'll let you form your own uh, opinions of it, but I think my opinion will be obvious. So, you want to beat Captain C -c 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 Comic, huh? Well, you could get Captain Comic 2, the fixed version, and probably do it. And then you could tell all your friends and family that you beat the world's greatest, the world's most uh, awesome computer game ever made. But on the other hand, you're, you're probably where I was about a month ago, tired, frustrated, on the edge, and all due to a cute little guy named Captain Comic. Yes, I was on the edge and about to slash the wrist of my tired, cramped hand, but now I can face the real world with my head held high. For I, I alone, accepted this secret mission to beat the hell out of Captain Comic, and I have suc succeeded my fellow computer game freaks, and now I want to share the attack plan that lead that led that lead this Captain Comic freak to all out victory. Okay, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I would love to do a dramatic reading of this file, but it does go on for quite a while. But this file, oh, this file really sticks out in my memory because this, obviously, I'm going to assume the maker of the game didn't produce this. This is like a, a fan fiction. Well, it's not really fan fiction, but it's like a like a fan made work, which they just included along with the game because it does basically walk you through the entire game. Uh, but I remember when I was young, this file became part of my childhood. I, I just, I love the writing style in this file because the guy is obviously just very excited. I mean, it, it, I think it's pretty obvious just from looking at what you see here. This guy is, is wonderfully excited about the game. Kind of like me. I guess I guess I like it because I identify with him. I also get very excited about the game. And then for some reason here, suddenly the text turns to lowercase for two paragraphs. And then it, it goes back to uppercase when, You just entered the moon base! Head right and get the shield! I also love the, the repeated use of the word boggy. You can see here, boggy left! Jump up to the top level and boggy left. I, I, I'm assuming that's supposed to be mean... I'm assuming that's supposed to say boogie, you know, boogie towards the left, meaning obviously walk left, but I just, I just love the, uh, the use of the word boggy. That word appears several times in the file. Uh, Oh, I, I love this part at the end here. This enters you into the awesome angry cave area. Look out for sure. When I was a kid, actually, that, that phrase, look out for sure, became part of my everyday um, lexicon because of this, um, or vernacular, I guess you could say, because of this file. This, that, that phrase, look out for sure, actually entered my, uh, my everyday parlance. So uh, here again, we have lowercase text suddenly, and then it goes to uppercase when you have entered the cave head right. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to go through this whole file. Just, yeah, there we go. There's, there's the end of it. Um, th I, I really just love stuff like this. These, these wonderful text files, which tell you about how to get through games. Um, text files like this were also a big part of my youth because, um, because, you know, I was active on BBSs back then before, uh, before I was on the internet and, there were a lot of these. These are really wonderful. If any of you folks uh, remember stuff like this and you also are, are nostalgic about these kinds of text files, uh, there is a site simply called textfiles.com, which is basically a repository of um, pretty much every text file ever made in, at least in North America, in uh, all of history. Uh, very very nice site. I'm actually very fond of that site. I had the pleasure of meeting its proprietor, Jason Scott, once at a uh, at a sort of a uh, 
not exactly a con, but sort of an event in San Francisco. A very nice guy. He's kind of like me in that he, uh, if you read what he writes, uh, if you read like his blog or something, he comes across as a giant asshole in, in his writing, just as I do. But in person, he's a very, very uh, nice guy, very charismatic, very friendly, has a lot of interesting things to say, uh, very easygoing, easy to get along with. So anyway, uh, I, I just, I, I, I love stuff like this. I mean, obviously, you can you can tell I, I get really excited about these kinds of text files. But anyway, let's get back to the, uh, to the games now. Um, okay, Catacombs. Oh, I don't know how well this will run. I have, uh, again, I, I am a little bit nervous about my, uh, my laptop performance because um, some games do tax the CPU and I start having recording problems when my CPU overheats, but, oh, this won't even run from the CD. I have to run this from the hard drive, but I bet if I just go directly to that folder or directory, soft more catabs, I bet I can run uh, the... Um, Catacombs is sort of a um, alternate name for a game called the Catacomb Abyss. So let's go ahead and hold on. What, full, what, what directory was that in? I already forgot. Softmore Catabs. So let's go to Softmore Catabs, and here we are. Do we have any uh, TXT files? Yeah, there are some. Do I have a browse in this directory? Yes, I do. Quick help for the Catacomb Abyss. Okay, there's not really anything. There's not really any, any interesting information here. This is just very basic information about how to how to play the game. This was a very early game from uh, yeah from Gamers Edge, and I don't want to get too much into the history here because um, again, I, I should be focusing more on the games and not too much on talking about stuff. But uh, if anybody's interested, this this game is a predecessor to Wolfenstein 3D, and it was uh, it did have heavy involvement with guys who later went on to id Software, who of course are the the folks behind uh, Commander Keen, Wolfenstein 3D, Quake, and many associated games. So anyway, I think I'm supposed to run Start here. There we go. A soft disk publishing production. And there's some stuff you can read here, like information you should know before playing, but we don't need to know the information we should know before playing. Let's just go ahead and press number six to play the game. Prepare to enter the catacomb. And I do just want to caution you folks a little bit. There's a bit of a... This is kind of a horror game. Uh, it's not really very scary. It's just right at the beginning there's, there's a bit where it gets kind of... Uh, The Mad Gamers of Gamer's Edge present a soft disk publishing production. I guess it's not really scary. I mean, you'll you'll see it in a moment. Uh, there's the title screen. That's a pretty good title screen. I actually like the title screen. That's a pretty good title screen for. Uh, Wow, 1992? Really? I thought this was I thought this was older than that. Okay, maybe for 1992, that's not such a great title screen, but still, I like it. Nice EGA graphics. Um, so, oh, I guess I have to press something here. Do I need to press something to get past? Yeah, okay, here we go. Dare you challenge the great nemesis as novice or warrior? You can press N for the easier difficulty or W, w for the harder one. And when you choose an option, brace yourself, folks, because he, he kind of uh, jumps out at you, so you might want to get the children out of the room for a moment and hang on to your chair. So I'll press N to play on the easier level. Ha! Another novice to feed my pets. That used to freak me out when I was a kid. I mean, I, I know it... it to a lot of you folks, it probably doesn't seem like very much, but you know, when you're a kid, you get scared by things easily, and that I remember that that kind of freaked me out just when his face suddenly fills the screen, like whoa. Um, but yeah, I guess now it's kind of yeah, it's a little, almost a little embarrassing to think that I was scared of it. But you know, again, when you're a kid, things uh, the world looks very different when you're a child. So you stand before the gate leading into the town cemetery, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read all this because I want to get to the game. You've arrived at the town cemetery. So, it's a little slow. I have DOSBox set to a relatively low number of cycles because, uh, again, I don't want to overburden my poor, poor old CPU. But you can see, this is, for all intents and purposes, it is a first-person shooter. Well, there's not much shooting going on right now because I haven't encountered any enemies yet, but basically, there we go, there's an enemy, and you press control to shoot, just as you did in Wolfenstein 3D and in Doom and so on. Uh, so yeah, this was basically, this is often considered the first proper first-person shooter for the PC. And that pink window will, yeah, that signifies a uh, 
destructible wall, so if you shoot the wall, you can move on. This game uh, does have a lot of destructible walls, and I think in many places you can't proceed unless you destroy certain secret walls, so... Um, I do like this game a lot because it really encapsulates something perfectly. It really is it really is the essence of something uh, special that was happening at that time in computer gaming history. Um, I'm not going to play it for too long because I don't think I could really do it justice. But this is a fantastic game. I guess it's not really... It's not really the... Uh, the uh, the first first-person shooter. It was preceded by what was that game called? Cy Cyberdrome or something like that. I don't remember that what the, what the name of the game was. Now there there was a game that preceded this. Maybe there might have been other sort of pseudo first-person games that preceded this, but but this was basically the first really properly smooth scrolling first-person shooter that had you know proper environments. I mean the walls are textured. Um, oh oh dear. Um, The the ground is not textured, it's just a f th that flat green, and the sky is not textured, although you do see those li nice lightning flashing effects, that's kind of cool. But um, but this was basically the same formula that was later used for Wolfenstein 3D, of course, with the untextured floor and ceilings with the nicely textured walls. So this really was the first game, I think, to really properly do this kind of an environment, uh, or at least probably the first popular one, the first widely known one. Okay, I need a green key to go in there. Anyway, I mean, if you've played later first-person shooters, it's not necessarily that much special. I mean, it's basically the same formula. You you find keys to open doors, um, you shoot any enemies that pop up, and other than that, you just wander around these mazes and try, try not to get too lost, because it's easy to get lost in these environments. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, a great game. Um, I, I love these EGA graphics. I'm very fond of EGA graphics. On this first Game Fest CD, uh, a lot of the games are 16 color EGA. Uh, I'll go ahead and quit. Uh, yeah, I'll just fare thee well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I said, on on the in this first Game Fest CD, a lot of the games are 16 color EGA. Um, I think the second one has more 256 color VGA games. Um, I might get onto that if I ever finish with this one. We'll see how that goes, but anyway. But there are some VGA games. Uh, there are some games with nice colors on this one as well. Um, so yeah, Catacomb Abyss. I, uh, I'm actually very fond of that game. I, I don't usually like horror games. I think I've said that several times before. I'm not really that much into scary games, um, but it's not really that scary. I mean, it, it's not It's it's not really a horror game. It's more like a cheesy... I mean, if anything, it's like a, a comic horror type of game. It has some... Some sort of uh, silly monsters, but they're more they're more silly and and cheesy than really frightening or disturbing. I mean, it's not a disturbing game. It's a it's a silly sort of horror themed game. Anyway, but a very good game in my opinion. Um, CD Man. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, it's in Softmore Seven Pro Six. I'm actually, you know what? I think I'm actually gonna go into the. Uh, rather than running the games directly from here, I'm actually gonna go into the uh, the folders. Um, because sometimes you see interesting stuff in these game directories, uh, and sometimes you don't, but let's see what we can find here. So there's a cd.txt, if we browse the cd.txt, oops, browse, not browser. A quick word about the company. Creative Dimensions was first opened in Stockholm, Sweden in 1987. Oh, this is a Swedish company, which is, uh, which I guess moved from... Stockholm to Pleasanton, California. Okay, maybe that's just a branch office. Oh yeah, it says there the California office. So maybe that's just a the North American distributor. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I guess the game is called CD Man then because the CD stands for Creative Dimensions. All right, let's let's go ahead and see what CD Man is all about. So it is quite simply a um, hello and welcome to CD Man. Yeah, here's the r registration information. <laughs> For for a ten thousand dollar contribution, we'll erect a statue of you in our office. I'm going to assume that is a uh, that is a joke. Don't know if anyone actually tried to take them up on that offer, but anyway. So yeah, CD Man. You can see it's uh, it's Pac Man. I mean, even this isn't even the, the game yet. This is just the title screen. You can already get the idea. This is basically Pac Man, right? And it is. It's pretty much Pac Man. So yeah, sound on one player speed. I'll keep it at the slowest speed. So here you can adjust the speed all the way from. Uh, 
so-called warp speed, which tops out at 126, all the way down to 1, which is zzz, wake me when you finished. I think that should be when you are finished, but anyway. Let's go ahead and just start the game. So yeah, it's it's Pac-Man. Um, it's not even really, some people might say it's 3D Pac-Man, but it's not even really 3D, is it? I mean, it's just basically, it's pretty obvious that this is just Pac-Man with some cosmetic changes. I mean, the ghosts in this level are spiders, and every, uh, Every level actually has different uh, different enemies in different settings. So I mean, here it's here it's spiders in a sort of a miniature golf course kind of setting. Uh, I think after this, if I remember right, it's uh, like a ocean themed sort of thing, like pirates on the high seas or something like that. And then I think the third level is outer space. Um, probably not going to play that far, but. But yeah, it's it's Pac-Man. And of course, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, Pac-Man is a, a good game. It's it's one of the one of the most classic games ever made. So nothing against Pac-Man. I certainly uh, don't dislike Pac-Man. Uh, and I do like this game. It's just, uh, you know, there's not much to say about it. Again, it's, it's Pac-Man with some cosmetic changes. They changed how some stuff... Uh, I, I do like how when Pac-Man dies, he just kind of deflates. It, he, it looks like a like a, a balloon stuffed with air that popped, and then he just sort of wilts and and falls down. And yeah, anyway, um, so I mean, this is a good game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, don't have anything really bad to say about CD Man. Uh, it's just I also don't have a lot to say about it. Period. It, it is what it is. You can see what it is. It's uh, what you see is what you get. So, good game. Uh, I like it. I do wish that the sound effects were a little bit better. I mean, these tinny sort of PC speaker sound effects just seem a bit out of place with these nice graphics. Because these nice graphics, even though they're only 16 color EGA, I, th I think that's 16 color EGA, I'm pretty sure it is. Even so, the, the graphics look so nice um, at this high resolution that I, I, I guess I would have appreciated a bit of... Um, Sound Blaster, or at least AdLib Sound, or something like that. But, uh, but no. Yeah, the sound, the sound sounds a bit out of place with the graphics. But again, it's not, uh, it's not bad. It's certainly not a bad game by any means. Just uh... anyway, I think you have to play through each setting three times, or something like that, to get to the next one. So I'd like to be able to show you folks all the different settings. But ah, uh, uh, let's just move on. I'll just go ahead and quit out of that and see where. Uh, where the rest of the games take us. Again, I, I don't, I'm not really here to show too much of, of these games at once because, uh, you know, it would just take a long time. Uh, and I think that my intention here is more to kind of give a brief sampling of each game than to really do a, a thorough treatment to each game. So five or 10 minutes per game, I think is, is pretty good for what I'm trying to do here now. Chopper Commando, this is, I'll just say right now, this might be one of my favorites on the on the whole CD, Soft Strategy Chopper. And it's funny because there's really not much to it. There's nothing very special about it. Uh, there's a doc.doc .doc file. Um, let's see, can I browse the doc.doc.doc? Doc, 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 doc. Okay, so... I'm gonna guess that none of those bulletin boards exist anymore, but um, but um, anyway, okay. Let's go ahead and run Chopper, and we'll see what we're on about. So this is Chopper Commando version two. Uh, I'll just quickly show the instructions. These are okay. Those are nice instructions, I guess. Uh, those are nice objectives. Um, tips. This is not an easy game. Uh, it's actually probably easier than, I don't know, I, I played it so much that I actually got pretty good at it. Let's see, other, there is Mr. Curry's address and stuff, and if you request I'll send you the source code. I think the source code for this is now available online if you uh, look it up online somewhere. I think you can find, I'm pretty sure I have the source code for this uh, in, uh, yeah, Turbo Pascal 5. Uh, and I guess that's it, let's go ahead and, we can practice the mission, but I'll just say S for start. 
and hey, look, Aldo is here. Aldo was uh, was a private, and he's dead. That that D, see the the D in the middle there. That means that he is dead, and M means missing in action. So yeah, use arrow keys, press F1 to create a new pile. I'll go ahead and erase CCC. Why not? I wonder if that's the Chaos Computer Club. All right, I'll just go ahead and put in my name, and there we go. Now we can choose myself as a pilot. Select game difficulty, Wimp Average or Commando. Um, I'm not trying to brag, but I played this game so much that I'll play on option three, Commando. Uh, the reason being that you get more points for that. I think you get more points for playing on the harder difficulty, so I'll choose number three. And... Do I really want a hard mission? Let's go for a hard mission, why not? Okay, mission 6A, a special military device must must sent, I think it's supposed to be must be sent to North Cape Base located 12 miles east of Okale Base. It must be sent in less than two minutes. Return home to Okale Base when mission complete. Good luck. All right. Um, so the trick here is you have to do it in, obviously, in two minutes, which is pretty fast. But uh, I'll go ahead and... I'm actually wondering if I should have chosen an easier mission because uh, it's going to be difficult for me to properly talk about the game while I'm I'm trying to focus. Oh come on, that should have that should have totally. All right, all right. So there we go. So I destroyed that helicopter, and now I need to destroy that helicopter. Okay, that was that's done. And there's another helicopter over here, whom I need to destroy like so. Oh, I'm out of practice. Whoa, I'm really out of practice. I guess it's been a while since I played this game, but I thought I was better than that. I thought I, uh, I thought I would be able to uh, do better than I'm doing now. But uh, okay. Anyway, so we, we made it across to the uh, to the base that we had to reach in uh, in less than two minutes. So now our, our objective is just to go back. And while I go back, I will bomb some random stuff on the way because that gets you more points. And here we go, there's some more stuff to blow up. And another thing to blow up. And another thing to blow up. There we go. And let's get rid of this fellow. And I'm out of ammunition. So let's just go ahead and come down here. And I've been using the mouse to play, so I'll land here. It's best, if you're if you're going to switch from mouse to keyboard, it's best to land first, and then you press T to turn off the mouse. And now we can come in here and land. There we go. That was that. And it fixes and rearms our helicopter and asks, are we returning? So if I say no, I can go... Basically, if I say no, then that means I just came here to fix and refuel or resupply my helicopter, and then I can go back flying again. But I'll, I'll, I'll press Y for yes, because I'm, I'm done with the mission. You transfer the top secret device within two minutes and return safely. Good work. Mission score is 242. It doesn't get much higher than that. I think sometimes you can get mission scores of around 300, but uh, not much beyond that, I don't think. So, good work, pilot. Thank you, General. I actually didn't think you could pull it off. All right. Um, so that was me being a macho tough guy and showing how somebody with way too much time on their hands plays Chopper Commando. Let's press P for the practice mission to do something simple now. Your mission is to fly three screens to the right, then shoot down the helicopter. After that, return back to the base. Remember, press E to eject if things look rough. Good luck. So, this is Chopper Commando. It really is my type of game. It, it's a very simple game. You can see immediately there's not much to it, but it is the perfect essence to me of what PC gaming is, because there's no nonsense, the graphics are very simple, the graphics are very um, sort of computery, and whoops, I crashed into that helicopter, because I wasn't using the mouse. Um, in my opinion, the, the, this game is actually much easier to play using the mouse. Using the, the cursor keys is this, is... this is kind of an exception to the rule. Usually I prefer playing games with the keyboard, but this is an exception. This is really much easier with the mouse once you get used to using the mouse. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but the way that the chopper controls with the keyboard is um, kind of... Eh, kind of... kind of meh, in my opinion. So, a, a rare game that I actually encourage playing with the mouse instead of the keyboard. That's pretty rare for DOS games, but great game. I, I really I can't I can't say anything bad about this game. I don't think it, it just it does everything right. It's really uh, I mean you can probably already have an idea from what you've seen if you'd like this game or not. If you have any interest in what you've seen, play this game. It it has my 
for me personally, from what you folks know of me as a guy who loves old DOS games, this game has pretty much my highest recommendation. I couldn't, I don't think I could say, I don't think I could pick a game that really beats this game in terms of just pure, sheer DOS gaming goodness. Um, but if you didn't like what you see, if you thought the graphics weren't pretty enough, or if, if you thought that the game looked boring, then you probably won't like it, so you can decide for yourself whether you'd like it or not. So, Chopper Commando. Thank you very much, Mark Curry, for making uh, a great game, really, in my opinion, a standout game uh, from, from those days. Um, I've already been going... Wow. I've already been going for more than half an hour, and I feel like I'm just starting. So I guess I should probably think about stopping the video. Let's see. What's next? What's the next game on the list? Clone Invaders. Oh. Do I want to... Hmm. Let's very quickly show this off, because this is basically just a, uh, a Space Invaders clone. So yeah, Soft Strategy Clone. I don't know why they put it in the Strategy folder, because it's it's not a strategy game. Some of the categorization in, in, on this CD is kind of weird. But yeah, Soft Strategy Clone. Uh, so yeah. Clone Invaders. I'll just go ahead and... Wait, let's read, the, uh, let's read that document first. From Gary Qu Queering... Clone in. Oh, it's not Clone Invaders, it's Clone Invader, even though it's based on Space Invaders. But okay. Um, let's see. Oh, this is. Uh, the previous version of this game apparently had mouse support, which was removed because of compatibility problems. Originally, the game was written in Quick Basic 2, then ported to Turbo Basic 1, and is now back to Quick Basic 4. Okay, well, hmm. All right, uh, so there's some information about stuff. All right, let's go ahead and run the game. Uh, User-supported software, in other words, shareware. All right, by Gary Quirring. So basically, you have four types of enemies, just like in Space Invaders. It, it really is, I mean, again, it's called Clone Invader because it's a clone of Space Invaders. I don't know why that R is upside down at the end of the... Oh, I see. I just noticed that at the bottom it said Papress one or two players and that guy. Oh, I see, they're fixing the title. It said Papress, Papress one or two players and that guy shot the extra P and now this guy is fixing the, the upside down R. That's nice. Oh, and here's a demo. All right, let's go ahead and play the game. I'll press one for one player. Whoa, that is way fast. Uh, let's slow DOS box down. All right, let's try this now. I might have slowed it down too much, but that's okay. Again, I'm terrible at games, so uh, this just gives me more of a uh, more of a chance. But yeah, it's it's Space Invaders. I mean, really, what can you say? It's it's Space Invaders. Good game, uh, but again, can I hit that thing? Ooh, just missed it. All right, whatever. Uh, I'll quit out of that. So yeah, Clone Invaders. Um, it's not good or bad. It's just a, it's a clone of Space Invaders. But uh, one thing I did want to show, I actually prepared this ahead of time because I thought I might play Clone Invaders in this video. If I come back here, see that directory there, INV78? This is not something that comes with Game Fest. This is actually something that I copied in here into this directory before making the video because I wanted to show this off quickly as a follow-up to Clone Invaders. This is something very nice, actually. It's a... Um, I guess I don't have browse in this folder. Uh, actually, I don't really have a good way to view these text files now. Um, but, uh, uh, hold on. If I go to, what's an example of a folder? Where, where was I just? I was in soft strategy clone, right? That should have that browse program in it. Yeah, and then INV, what was it? INV, hold on, I forget the name of the, file now. Um, yeah, browse, INV, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here we go. The invaders march. Bom, 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 bom. Left, right, fire. Faster, faster, they march. Um, this is the nice text file that comes with the game, and that is a still active website where you can download this game, which is a nice freeware game. And, uh, and there's a waffle, which basically means rambling in British English, as far as I can tell. Um, and I'm not going to 
obviously read all this because I'm supposed to be ending the video soon. So I'll just very quickly go to the end. And uh, and while I'm doing this, I'll very quickly show off the source code. This is the QBasic source code, which is also very nice. Um, I really do appreciate games that include source code. Even back then, it was very nice when games included source code, whether it was BASIC, Pascal, assembly language, um, or C, or C++, or just whatever, whatever it was in. It's, it's very nice when games include sor uh, source code. And I'm just scrolling through all of it just for posterity, just in case anybody watching out there wants to actually try and type all of this from scratch, just in case the game somehow gets lost and you want to type all this in or just see what it looks like. I guess you can also download it from the website, but I'm always worried what if the website goes down or you know somehow the game disappears and becomes unavailable. So so I just want to quickly include this uh, here. But uh, I realize this is, this is probably not the most practical way of communicating source code to people. Wow, look, look at these awesome character graphics. Oh, it's so cool. The, you know, at the end of a basic program, you have these data blocks that, uh, and these are actually the graphics. Look at that. Look, oh, those, those are actually the graphics for the, for the um, Space Invaders rendered as number signs in data blocks at the end of a QBasic program. That is so awesome. Oh, that's so cool. And those are the, oh, oh, even have the letters and things like that here at the bottom. Wow, that's so cool. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow, that's great. Are we almost at the end here? I thought, I thought usually those data blocks are at the end of the source code, but appear, apparently there's more stuff here going on. I was gonna say, I, I realize this is not necessarily the most efficient way to communicate source code to people because uh, me just scrolling rapidly through this text in a, in a video is probably not gonna not preserving it very well, but anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly run the game just to show you. So, yeah, it draws the sprites in the upper left so it can get and put them, as was common with basic games back in the day. And here we go. So, let's start the game. So, if I remember right, yeah, you don't use arrow keys here. Control is left, Alt is right, and I think, yes, Shift is shoot. This is fantastic. The sound in this is wonderful. A basic game that actually plays sound effects, not using the PC speaker, but using the sound card. How many QBasic games do you know that play... Ooh, I actually hit that thing. Amazing. How many QBasic games do you know that use the sound card rather than the PC internal speaker? I don't know very many, to be perfectly honest. I don't think there are that many of them. But this game does it, does it very well. The game is rock solid, and... Um, yeah. And again, it's it's Space Invaders. What can you say? It's Space Invaders. There's not really a lot to say about it, is there? I don't I, I don't have a book that I could write about this game. Uh, but it's a very nice clone. I really I really like the way that this program Ah, oh, I just missed that thing. I always shoot too early, just like uh, you know, many guys have that problem of uh, they shoot too early. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously not gonna be able to write a book about this game, but it's just... I appreciate a good, uh, good well-done clone, even though this is just a clone. Um, I just... there's something very nice about the presentation, about the way that the sound is done, about the way that the graphics are presented. Uh, it just... there we go, I hit that thing. Alright, I'll go ahead and quit out of that, but uh, again, you know, what can you say about Space Invaders? There's not a whole lot to say, but... I do appreciate something like that, and I wanted to show it off because um, I did just play Clone Invaders, and nothing against Clone Invaders. I'm not saying that Clone Invaders is um, is bad, and I'm not trying to make the programmer of Clone Invaders feel bad, but I do feel like this is in in many ways a uh, a preferable clone of Space Invaders because there's just something there there's something very um, there's something intangible about it which which just really speaks to me. I mean, Clone Invaders is nice as a DOS game, but this really just uh, kind of goes above and beyond the call of duty of making a, a proper game that really captures the feel of something very special and magical, which uh, which you don't often get a lot in games these days. I guess sometimes I guess many indie games also capture that feel because a lot of indie games are very retro kind of themed. But uh, but yeah, this. Uh, yeah, this it is what it is. I, I like this. I, I prefer this as a Space Invaders clone. I prefer this to Clone Invader, 
Um, and again, not saying anything bad about Clone Invader. It's also a pretty well put together game, but I think this is um, this goes above and beyond what I would expect of a of a remake of a classic arcade game. So. So that's all. I'll go ahead and stop for now. Uh, I apologize for going on so long. I, I mean, I've been talking for 45 minutes. Um, and again, I feel like I've just begun. I could I could go on like this for hours probably um, because I, I, I just really do enjoy these games. I, I just so very much enjoy DOS games, really um, not just from a nostalgic sense, but also in other ways as well. I, I really think that these games are uh, are something very special, but anyway. Anyway, I've gone on talking long enough. I apologize for keeping you folks here for so long. Thank you. If you actually sat through this whole video, thank you for watching all the way. Uh, and hopefully we'll have more good times with more great DOS games in the future. So I wish you folks all well. Wish you all the best. Hope that uh, everyone's doing well and that, again, that you've been enjoying watching me ramble and play games badly. And we will talk to each other again once more in the future. Until then, fare thee well, and look out for sure.